How sad, dear brother. You make me wish I were an only child. Then why this marvelous gift? The troublesome little man-child. Are you prepared for the kind of death you've earned, little man? If you take one more step towards my son. Ah, motherhood. Back off, or I'll turn your little man into a torch. I promise him exquisite pain, unless you obey me too, brother. Move away, Data. Please. Do you see now the advantages of being completely human? It includes kindness. I give you your life, Doctor. Go, quickly. And I may not injure your son at all. I will stay with Wesley, Doctor. Go! Or he'll be shrieking by the count of five. One, two, three, four. Thank you for my human qualities, Dr. Soong. Wait! A small payment for your son's misdeeds. Hey, I'm Kyle. Thanks for joining me and Andy for the Legendary Creature Podcast. So, if you're listening with your kids or your conservative grandma, maybe don't, because we swear. Or you can check us out on YouTube, because hey, that's no place for conservative old women or children. Fuck yeah. There's a, there's a guy that like stepped away from our commander game in the commander tournament. Like, oh my gosh, that's the professor. I'm gonna go have him sign my nipple. Really? He no. said nipple? He didn't say, <laughs> he didn't say nah, nipple. he said nipple. He Fuck wanted a card, but you know. He could I mean, have said nipple. I would have believed you. Those, those, those big fat nerds, they got big areolas, dude. Really they have down, big though. areolas. <laughs> it's a defining feature. Dude, those are our people you're talking about. <laughs> you're talking about our people. You're right. I'm sorry. You know, I have fat areolas. <laughs> it's called areoli- areolitis. <laughs> my cousin has the, like, teeniest they're like they're like mosquito bite nipples oh that's scary dude like they're like weirdly small yeah they're like teeny like like you go swimming and you're like where the fuck are your nipples (laughs) all right let's let's start our podcast before we talk too much about (laughs) our cousin's nipples you know that's our next podcast venture kyle your cousin's nipples. Start. Kyle's, <laughs> Kyle's cousin's nipples? And Kyle's cousin's Best nipples. Best ever printed? Question mark? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> he like put him up there, guy or girl. <laughs> Fuck. All right, it's start the thumbnail. this. Start this podcast right, right now. I demand it. All right, we're talking, we're talking with AP, dude. We brought him in to, to have us teach us the, about lore. Let's Kyle. do it. I'm back on. We're doing a whole episode about lore. <laughs> AP, what is a lore? <laughs> uh, you know. He's dead I, his brother. I- ideally how you connect to the game most likely how you cash grab apparently <laughs> go see planeswalkers <laughs> yeah <laughs> cash grab or yeah how you identify with, with or how game. you identify so magic's pretty unique in that you know it's a game and then and a story and a story I don't know I don't know if I could say that about Dungeons and Dragons because Dungeons and Dragons is a story it's a choose your own adventure story pretty much yeah. that's a that's a game yeah. yeah, and they're not as. I mean, I guess I'm a little more ignorant of D and D, but I don't know if they're as married to mechanics as we are with, you know, magic. Like we're really conscious of will this break the format or will yeah. this card, like Planeswalkers pre manning were literally so powerful they couldn't be represented in a card. Yeah, I don't know if D and D has stuff like that. I guess I just wouldn't know. Yeah, we'd probably have to ask Chris. He's the D and D guy. Like, yeah, he's the guy, dude. There's, there's no, nobody in this room that has enough experience to speak to that. Yeah, I would assume. But for the most part, magic is pretty unique in its obstacle of what does it do for the game? And also, yeah, like what plot can we derive from this? Yeah. You know, and we have a whole team dedicated to it, right? We have Mm R&D and Andy just sent me a link today that kind of talks about 
their process. And ideally, it is kind of like a top to bottom. It starts with conceptualizing a plane and a story, and then it'll later on represent itself in a card. But it does kind of preface on that, that sometimes it's not in that same sequence. And oh, think, sure. Like, and, and, you know, I think more and more we're seeing that sometimes it maybe doesn't start with the plane, you know? I, I think lore matters more to commander players than anyone else. I don't think it really gives a shit, like, outside of... Yeah, it's it's kind of funny because the... Um, what's the podcast? Is it Limited Resources or whatever? Uh-huh. They, they talk about how, like, they don't... I don't give a fuck about the lore. Yeah. <laughs> well, they even like put what is it? They started putting like story elements on cards. Like it has like a little notation at the bottom of the card saying, "Hey, something important to the story happened at this location." So like if you look at like the Adventures Fair, yeah. It has a it has like a way to kind of tell you that this matters to their to their arc. So like they are putting money into it. Like they care about yeah, conveying like, their I story. Think, I think in Amon Ket, there were like eight cards that had the planeswalker symbol on it that were like integral to the storyline. Like it wasn't just like, oh, ancillary characters yeah, or whatever. So it says story spotlight. It'll say like one out of whatever. So like right above the artist's name, it'll have a story spotlight of like something happened here. Oh, so interesting. You can kind of like associate the card to the story. Okay. So yeah, this is this this is something that's unique i think to to gaming like as far as you know like a non video game very mechanic and strategy heavy game that magic is like it also has to kind of have its hands in this other part of all right how do we how do we sell the narrative yeah you know yeah i don't know what do you think would happen if they're just like yeah you know what we're not we're not wasting time with story anymore like here's the cards i think people would probably still play but I, they would too. here's 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 what I think would happen. It'd strip the romance out of it. For here's sure. what I it think would. would happen though is you'd probably just end up with fan stories. Because it anyways, yeah. yeah, it would be like Star Trek kind of a thing. Like I want more. I'm gonna create more. Like there's an implication of story just by the nature of these cards existing. Uh huh. And somebody's gonna make it if they don't. Yeah. I mean, I I, I think they'd be fine without it. I think it'd do a lot to the players that are already invested in the game and the story. And I like what you said about how commander players care more about it because in a singleton format and especially like you're restricted to those colors of your commander. I think in this format, we identify up our decks a little more. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a better yeah. way to express yourself. You That's part of the appeal for so me. much from the commander. Like there's yeah, exactly. just so much you have to kind of live by with that choice of, okay, this, this is my commander. I don't, yeah. I don't know. This, I don't think I've ever necessarily picked somebody because I didn't like them in the story though. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, Zergo's kind of a kind of a cock. I don't want to. I don't want to make a deck. <laughs> but but you, like, have, dude, you know, you have been disappointed though by how they've been represented in the card. Yes, with, I have with Ludovic primarily. So I'm thinking or of. Zergo Bellringer, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That that <laughs> thing, Ludovic was. I remember being really hyped up about him when they when. I'm like, where is he? Because, you know, we... Yeah, like, give me this guy. Yeah, when the Innistrad cards, like, he had, like, what is it? The the big frog, the egg that turns into, like, the giant frog thing. Like, uh-huh. he had all of these, like... There was evidence of this Mozart of zombie making and Mozart of... <laughs> yeah. You know, he was supposed to be just some, like, fucking Beethoven of, of, of... Yeah, Jack the Ripper style monster horror, you know? <laughs> and then... And same with Jissa and Giralf. Yeah. So we're kind of building up to it. They do a Jissa... A Jissa uh, card, and then they did a Giralf card, and he was significantly weaker than her, I think. I don't know, unless there's one out there that works. Like, I, I just, and then they merged them together. Yeah. I think I'm on the same track line. So they, they merged them together, and that card worked really well. So you're like, okay, where's, where's the zombie oriented mad scientist yeah. Ludovic or Ludovic? <laughs> and right. yeah, dude, like what we got does not represent. Like, it's, I like the card as a partner, but like, that's, does not reflect what I was expecting. But then what was all that for? What was yeah. all that like careful, like, you know, like what was all that about? Why didn't it line up? You had Innistrad, you, well, I think by then, by the time he dropped, like you had all of these different moments of time where you've referenced this character and then we finally get him and he's this pol- politic, like politician card in, in is it color typing? Yeah. You know? It's a little weird, right? It's because, not that I don't because, like the card. It's just it, I didn't wish. I just wish it was somebody it's, else. It's also not as if they don't do a lot of planning, too, right? Yeah. Like I think, you know, like one that we've talked about at the table recently has been the the vengeful pharaoh, 
That that card came out way yeah, was, before it, we it was, ever got around to, to yeah. sniffing that Amonkhet existed, right? And so they're they're planning things out way ahead. You know, well, like the turnaround's like two years for a set, right? Isn't that some, what we something kinda, along those lines? I think they have an idea even predating that, but probably their track line of yeah, we're gonna work on this one. We have like kind of a scale, but. Yeah, because if you look at the Vengeful Pharaoh, like that came out in 2012, and he has like bolus looking horns. Yeah, like you can tell that they already planned that they were going to have this Egyptian themed plane with where Bolas has heavy influence. Five years later, yeah, pretty wild. Yeah, I'm sure they have the concept pretty early on, but I I bet things get pushed out. And the last time I was on here, Andy, you actually had a theory like how many sets are designed around just pop culture, and I think. I think we see a ton of that recently. Like yeah, we saw, I have we've this, been I don't have a lot of proof, but I have a feeling that their their sets are influenced heavily by what's going on in pop culture. And I I have weird examples of why. So if we go back to like when Innistrad was big, yeah, vampires and zombies were pretty big. Like there was like this era where you just could not get away from <laughs> from zombie everything. Yeah. 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 World War Z, zombie survival guide. 28 zomb- days later. Yeah, like 20 like just zombie yeah. zombie zombie and every every person that even And that was probably oh, about dude. the time that Walking, Walking Dead, Dead first Dead. emerged a little bit. Yeah, that, around there. That, so, yeah. you kind of have to think like what was going on when they popped that into our, you know, like it's not that they didn't have zombies before that. I'm not saying yeah. like Innistrad is the zombie yeah. set, but But there's a push. There's definitely like a push and then vampires were big like you know, yeah, like that's I'm not gonna say Twilight, but, but Twilight, Twilight was big at the time. And what was that other TV show? The, the True, True Blood, Blood? and yeah. like th- these True were Blood. kind of bigger things. That's a good point. You know, that's a good point. <laughs> and then kind of thinking thinking of other things that were like, okay, why why is this? I don't know. Like I, my my feeling is this whole like War of the Spark thing was because of what's going on in the Marvel universe. Yeah, like the that's, most profitable franchise. Yeah, like the ever. Gatewatch is is the Marvel universe. It's the Avengers. Like yeah, people call them the, the Super MTG Friends. Avengers. Yeah. yeah, it's the MTG Avengers. And then kind of what's happening in that narrative is it seems like it's bleeding into uh, magic as well. You know, I was talking to AP today. I'm like, I think I think Vikings are going to be the I sure shit thing. hope That'd so. Saskia needs a home because yeah. there's so many Viking TV shows. There's what is it the the last kingdom it's vikings right yeah uh there's yeah, just straight up vikings kind of yeah but it is vikings. same era yeah. uh yeah then there's just like thor and thor ragnarok like all of those things are there, there's some like more comedic vikings show on netflix like all the characters are just kind of like fuck ups you know mm. i forget the name of it yeah but yeah you're right it's it's, it's I, in vogue for I have, sure i have a pretty pretty strong feeling like it's on it, within a year you know, because if they're on a two year turnaround, like what was going on last year, that's going to happen next year. The only question is, will there be any Viking pirates? 100%. They kind of are a little bit. 100%. But just for card's sake, right? We need more pirates, dude. No, it'll be Eldrazi Viking. That kind of. <laughs> Eldrazi Vikings. Instead of beards, they have tentacles on their chin, dog. <laughs> then we're in like Davy Jones pirate territory, anyways. <laughs> Maybe call this it. is getting out of control already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ko- <laughs> Kozilek returns as just like a pirate. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, something I wanted to talk about with lore, I, I actually wanted to talk about like less with the what's happenings of lore. I'll do like a recap just so we're kind of like caught up where we're at. But I want to yeah, ca- talk, talk about, about like, the, like current, the how. The current story. The yeah. current Infinity War. The current Infinity War. Kind of the how of like how Magic's narrative has kind of been for like the last couple of years. So where we're at right now, we're reaching this huge climax, right? We're following kind of the main antagonist of the magic universe. Nikki B. Nikki B. Yeah. Right. He has a plan. We're not entirely sure what, but we know he has a couple artifacts. He has the planar bridge, so kind of an artificial way to go between planes without having a spark. He has the immortal sun, which shuts down planeswalking. See, when they did the planar bridge thing, I was like, there's gonna be some tie back to the Phyrexians. Yeah, you're like, why? Why does that's he how they that? move? I, that they isn't that how they moved around mm-hmm. before? There was yeah. some like gateway between. Yeah, they artificed it. They don't have the spark, but they fucking found a way. Yeah, they know? just they nasted it out. Yeah, they nasted it out. <laughs> and then yeah, Nikki B lastly has an army, is the Army of Eternals, right? So each plane we've been to has kind of served that purpose of like whatever Nickel Bulls' plot has been. So they're like undead Terminators. That's yeah. kind of what me and Kyle landed. Yeah, on. They're, yeah. They're, they're covered are, with the Lazatep. Like, yeah. yeah, they are. And they've all, they're all the people that have been 
tested, I guess, and the reward for that is so in life they were they were they apex were apex fighters, yeah, and now in death they've been well, they're dead. They're, so they're whatever, dead, but they've got the whatever Lazatep, benefits like, that affords yeah. them, and then yeah, they've got like that footnote exoskeleton. Sineheb, you know, yeah, yeah, he's a good representation. Yeah, he's sick. Of that. Yeah. Do you think they're going to be flooding those immortals into like the Ravnica? It would be 100%. interesting to see if that's what's happening. That's what I think. Here's what I think is happening. I, I, think's happening. I think Nickel Ball is, he has an army, right? Just putting it all together, he has an army. He has a way to planeswalk that army into Ravnica. Um, he has designs. He's kind of infiltrated all the guilds to. Um, I think it's I think it's Raul Zarek that sent a beacon to all the planeswalkers so that they can come to Ravnica. Why do they want them all there? So that Nicol Bolas can use the other artifact, the Immortal Sun, to trap them there. And I think I mean it's called War of the Spark. I think he's and just trying to them while they're there. Kill all of them. For why? I don't know. You know, and and for how? I think that's kind of it. Just a big <laughs> brawl of the armies. People also have theories that he's there to raise the Nephilim again. And use oh. them against, kind of like mind control them, have them fight the planeswalkers. And I've seen people hoping to see the Nephilim in, in cards. Yeah. As I legendary just, creatures. You uh, know? All I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't need Nephilim. What I needed was partners from different yeah. guilds. Yeah. yeah. That, that Even if they think, were the monogamous kind that you and I are less into. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm okay with them. Yeah. If imagine. If it says partners on it, I'm probably going to fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, here's what I. But then again, for. the problem with that is, well, they just can't be guild masters. Like, I would yeah. be. A, because it'd kind of bother me if they did, like, a weaker version of, like... Because in my mind, like, gu- guild masters are supposed to magnify their colors the best. Like, yeah, you're yes. the alpha. They're, the yeah, they're the, they're yeah, the, yeah, they're the, the top best. dog. They're the boss, right? So, you know, it would just kind of be weird. Because, yeah. you know, you, partners have to be dialed yeah, back they a little be bit. tuned down. So to be, like, you, you couldn't put, like, uh, I don't know, like, Niv-Mizzet pair rune with... Like Laz- Lazav, yeah, that would, that would just... be like, whoa, whoa holy shit! And but, their mechanics don't necessarily but then it would overlap. Be, all that it would much. be weird to dial them down too. Like, yeah, it would I, be, yeah. It so would be weird just... to have a weak Niv Mizzet and a weak Lazav. Yeah, if they were just like saying. two foot soldier mid mid middle managers from each of these guilds, yeah, and they partner Malik with each 2.0 other, or something. Yeah, like, like that. in whatever pairing, what would be really crazy is if they were non monogamous. Like that would be. If they were like the swinger partners that we like, yes. that would be insane. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the trans yeah. guild monk. Because you can just mix <laughs> and match and just what, go nuts. What I wanted to happen, because it kind of set it up this way, is that basically half the guild leaders are under the reign of Nicol Bolas. The other half are, yeah, just locals. They're Ravnikans. Yeah. What I hope to happen is that it was kind of half and half. Like there is a limitation of who you partner with based on if you're fighting for Ravnica or if you're fighting for Nicol Bolas. Oh. You know what I mean? So then it's like only limit with. You know, the, the Ravnican Alliance or only do it with, you know, Nicol Bolas' insurgents or whatever. Yeah. yeah. The monogamous kind, like, they end up, you just end up using both. Like, yeah, it's just, it, it's a, it's a double colored card that's split into two commander costs with two different commander damage rungs. Like, you know, yeah. not, I'm not dogging on Corvath and what all those guys from Battle Bond, but it really was just like, yeah, it's a two piece thing with two different yeah, mana costs. Yeah. They come with their own advantages i guess but the ones from what is it commander 2016 just where it's just straight partner there's a lot more there's a lot more flexibility in terms of the ability to build around yeah them in very different ways ah dude yeah yeah i don't know i think i mean i guess we don't completely know what this third set's gonna look like still we're we're not in spoiler season but we know for a fact 36 card slots are eaten up by planeswalkers you know and eaten yeah (laughs) You know, and if, if don't they're flip them creatures, to be that I don't ama- know. Yeah, don't expect them to be that amazing. Yeah, it'll be akin to Dominaria is what we should expect in terms of like, there's going to be uncommon planeswalkers who are like, planes yeah. yeah. Maybe, but some, will, some of them will be dope, I'm sure. Yeah. 32 planeswalkers. This is just wizards going, brawl, please. Just brawl, Stop would you? Stop playing Commander oh, yeah. and play Brawl, you <laughs> oh, pieces no. of shit. I forgot it existed the month after, you know, I got it now. Would you brawl, please? Can you? <laughs> All right, well, well, hit us with the story then. What, how, do, how do we get here with this, with this Nikki B situation? Yeah, so, you know, again, a lot of his plot is kind of, we're not sure. You know, we have a lot, we know he has a lot of insecurities with being like the smaller of the Elder Dragon. I guess that's part of like what even initiated his spark because right. he's because he's smaller nikki b's yeah. the guy that's got he's the, like insecure he's, he's got yeah. the like 
balls hanging from the back of his truck. Yeah, he's one dude. of those guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, from what I read, that's what I read. Is that he kind of got made fun of? Look how big my Nikki B's on. And it initiated a spark. <laughs> and for reference, a spark. What's supposed to initiate your spark is a huge traumatic event, like a life changing event. For so, Ugin, it's like him challenging his own morals and realizing like he has to fight his own traumatic. twin brother. And, you know, he has to fight a family member, and that's where his spark ignites. With Gideon, I believe, like, he fought Erebos, and Erebos killed literally all, everyone he fucking knew, you know? He Those are Erebos? things that initiate. Yeah, he I fought Erebos. That. Dude, Erebos is an asshole. Yeah, dude, he's, he's whip his ass. ass. He's I fucking love that guy. He fucked him up, dude. Literally, you know? Well, I mean, he, he fucked everybody up, but else up, you know? But yeah, th- those are generally things that initiate sparks. What I read about Nicol Bolas, the antagonist of the magic universe, is he got, you know, he got bullied, dude, and Initiated his spark, and now we know he fucking planes walk. Yeah, <laughs> he got he got bullied. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's kind of what I you know who was bullying of, him. The other dragon, I think it was the, the other, other elder dragons. You know, that's just a passage I wrote. But yeah, that's and what kind of bullying? Like they were just like, "Hey, man, you're you're a dork," and that I don't know how that much was of enough, it, dude. He like freaked the fuck they're out. They're blowing fire up so his asshole. Really, like <gasps> you're a little dude. You can only take on one village, idiot. <laughs> You can only take on one village. You know? <laughs> so then he compensated through mind control, you know, and he does it that way. But huh. that's, you know, I wanted to talk a lot about that. Like me and Andy have been talking a lot in the last couple of weeks since he invited me onto the show to talk about lore. Just a lot about kind of characterization. Yeah. With specifically like the gate watch and kind of where we're at. Um, and then your opinions on that. And then my opinions on that. So Ooh. here's, here's, here's kind of in errors, right? Presently where we're at is, yeah, we have, Nicobolus and the antagonist, and the protagonist is the Gatewatch, right? Which are who now? I don't even. Which are Jace, Four Blue, Nissa actually left. Yeah, Nissa. Who, who was it? It's like someone Reed, Vivian Reed. Vivian Reed. She's she's just the Green Ranger, dude. Yeah, she's the Straight Green up. Ranger. Replaced her. You know, halfway through she replaced Eric Foreman's sister. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we have Gideon as Didn't White. Chick die. Dude, Dude I think fuck? she did, man. Do you? Wait, 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 wait. In One of the Power Rangers show. was in that '70s show. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm just talking we about just that. We just got 70s like show, way, like yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was anyway. like, really? But yeah, basically, one represents each color, right? There's a little more that goes into the dual colors and the tri colors or whatever. Um, but there's blue, black is Liliana, white is Gideon, uh, green is now Vivian Reed, wasn't this a uh, red is Chandra? Right, so this is the Gate Watch. They're the defenders of the. Well, wasn't like a Johnny, like every what are the oath yeah? Cards a Johnny's about? in it now, and then Teferi's in it too. So, so they they're like auxiliary those. characters. Yeah, they're yeah. like Hawkeye. But the core, and... <laughs> yeah, they're auxiliary characters. And, the core uh, is the five though. That's Teferi's, kind of what they're built Teferi's, around. Teferi slots, like what was the what was the computer guy that was just the living computer dude? Uh, is it Ultron or whatever his name is? No, what? Vision. Vision. There we oh, go. Oh, okay. He's no. just like this living. He's like a living it. I was uh, thinking that you were talking about MASH. I'm like, no, I'm not talking about MASH, dude. (laughs) I don't know how the Gatewatch relates to MASH. But you said Hawkeye. (laughs) Isn't Hawkeye one of the Avengers? Yeah. Okay. I was like, there's a Hawkeye in MASH. Okay. (laughs) I only know of like Radar and then the the guy that wears Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what? That's part of kind of my opinion on the Gatewatch. It's, It's kind of that. Like, they don't have a very strong identity in the magic universe. So you have universe. to keep relating them to stuff You have to keep relating them to other stuff. You can name a hundred different things, right? That's... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, the Avengers, obviously, you can name, you know, the Avatar, the last airbender and their crew. You know, you can, you can keep going. I can do that all day. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's the most basic way you can identify somebody, right? With my kid, I have a three-year-old, and the first thing he relates people to, or his first question is, what is your favorite color? It's like the first thing you relate someone to. It's like this color you represent and all these things that are supposed to go behind it. Yeah. And that's part of what's so cool about magic. It is the color pie. What I don't like about the Gatewatch is, yeah, they, they are so restricted within those colors. But I think with how long we've been following them and how long we've drawn it out and how little they show flaws for those colors and the colors philosophies because they round each other out as a group. Sure. I think it's exhausting. I think it's fatigued. And I think it actually came to a point to where it hurts a lot of Magic's lore, specifically with Ravnica, that this huge climax is happening in Ravnica. One of the more vibrant 
planes. Yeah, that one they of the to. one of the richer planes, and it has very little to do with the functionality of the plane. Exactly just, here. Yeah, here's your new here's your new guild cards because we have to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't even know why it's in Ravnica. I mean, I guess I believe the Gatewatch's headquarters are in Ravnica. Maybe that's why Nickel Bolas did it. Hit him in their headquarters. I know. So since Jace is the living guild pack, right? Right. What does that Packed. even mean? So he's the one that solved the uh, implicit maze, okay. which was set up by, I think it was set up by Azor, if I'm remembering What's right. It was Azor or, or Asperia, one of, one of those. I think it's Azor, though. One of those snobs. And then, uh, yeah, he's, it was meant to be like, it, this maze is solved if the guilds are breaking down. Mm-hmm. And then he solved it, became the living guild pact, so he's the person that makes decisions to keep the guilds cohesive like yeah. what like what decisions well I, I don't know i guess maybe you'd consider him like a prime minister or a president oh, okay or something so like he's that. the president of ravnica now something like that okay yeah. and they're all like instead of just two political parties there's 10 yeah and he's just got veto power or something i guess <laughs> yeah i mean huh. i think for me it, it it's more just a way to show that jace is supposed to be like magic's protagonist almost I mean, at this point, it's it's felt like he's been like the main character a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, and for a long time, well, people call him the face of magic. Yeah, yeah, the face of magic. You know, and I think that's part of what I was saying that it's getting to a point where it's hurtful to a lot of the lore. Um, I know from at least from what I read, I believe R and D's whole philosophy about you know the mending and then incorporating the new planeswalkers in the Gatewatch is they wanted to get away from these small stories about just you spend X amount of time in a plane and then you leave, and that's kind of put in the past, and they wanted to form kind of a, a long-form narrative, like someone you can follow along the planes, and now they can kind of develop a story longer than they were able to before Yeah, through Planeswalkers. And I think initially it was a tool to do that. But I think... They've stuck to this one a little too long. I yeah, think. well, not even... it started in what? Zendikar? Because I, yeah, yeah, because the last well, there time there was they, even hints of it in Tarkir, right? Because Ugin gets resurrected at the end of Tarkir. Like, we're point. kind of getting, I think even before that, like you meet the planeswalkers. Well, you yeah, know? you know them, but like, like I was really into the story on Theros, and that was yeah. that was primarily about Elspeth. It was self contained, it seemed yeah, like yeah. it really was. Yeah, I think, you know, I think as they were getting introduced, they kind of had to, you know, slowly inject them into the narrative. Yeah. But the more time has passed, the more it's been about, well, less about the planes and more about the planeswalkers, right? Because yeah. initially, like pre-mending, I mean, there's the super powerful planeswalkers that you did follow. But for a lot of the time, it felt like, you know, you described it as, you know, you're the planeswalker. That was initially how it is. Yeah. That you're the planeswalker, you're experiencing these planes for yourself. And you're getting a glimpse into this world that they've created. Um, and you see it through the art, you see it through the cards, you see it through the story. But now it's, now it's falling what is Jace doing in Ravnica? What is Nicol Bolas doing in Ravnica? And all the things that happen in Ravnica are to kind of bolster the main plot, the main plot, right? Which is about the Gatewatch and whatever Nicol Bolas has been cooking up for two years. Okay. Right. And yeah. I don't mind that. I don't mind long form narratives. I think it was a smart idea and I like that they took that risk. But I think how they did it, if you're going to give us a character for so long, there needs to be more development than we've had. And I think there needs to be Characters that aren't so appealing, characters that have flaws. Like these characters aren't relatable to me. Like sure. they're very attractive characters. <laughs> they have very little flaws. And wherever, you everything know, one do, falls short. Like a trope. Yeah, everything yeah. they do is a trope. Yeah. You know? If they do And a I get flaw. everybody needs that. And and you know, to give them credit, the way how they kind of fit into those tropes are cool. Like Jace is cool because he has the illusions. He has the mind sculpting thing. He messes with people's memories and all that. Well, that's like his kit. That's his kit. Exactly. That's his kit. That's his, you know, that's his power. That's his whatever. But yeah. What about his personality? Or- exactly. And those are, there's a, there's a couple things I've noticed specifically with the Gatewatch character race, you know, in far as their characterization that I've noticed, you know, and I've, you know, a hobby of mine is studying a lot of film and like writing. So I've been able to like make some overlap with that. And I think, Kind of three main things with them is, for one, like their motivations or lack of, you know, two, how they develop or even unravel throughout the story. Mm-hmm. And then three, yeah, the, for me, the most interesting thing about 
a character are their flaws. You know, they have these strengths, but then they have these flaws, and that's kind of the catch. Yeah. It's what, for me, is so awesome about deck building is that you have these flaws, and instead of rounding it out, I, you know, I like to lean one way and kind of specialize. <laughs> it's not like they yeah. haven't tried it before, though. Like, they've had characters that were pretty flawed. If I remember, what is it, Nissa? She used to be just like a consummate racist. Yeah. No, like and I was, thought that was cool. Like, she was, <laughs> I mean, it was interesting. Not in the way, not in like the earthly way, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. she only cared about elf and elf kind. That was it. Yeah. She was like, a xenophobe. She, she didn't care about all the other races on Ravnica, like sure. her on uh, Zendikar. Like she was just whatever. I'm only thinking about the elves. And then, yeah, like, screw the core. Yeah. But it's like, are, why change it? Because the character they came up with was so disposable that they disposed of her almost. Mm-hmm. I and think just that's, her that's with... manifest in some other ways, right? Because, like, I feel like Jace and Liliana, who were the two planeswalkers that stood out to me the most when we started playing, mm-hmm. are different, right? Like Now than they are Not then. like, uh, oh, their natural progression as a human being or, or anything like that. Just I just, honestly, like, I don't know. I don't want them to progress. I want them gone. Yeah, at this I point, want a new blue, the spark. I want a new blue guy. I want a new red dude or new yeah. whatever like just switch it up a little bit you know what i mean that's like, what i hope happens in wars or the spark no because i think i think they've had enough time to develop and i think that's what's kind of lacking is that usually when you character <laughs> when you follow characters for that long the ones that engage you are ones that have like relatable motivations for one right so i'll use like breaking bad as like a really relatable motivation so his whole thing is that he gets diagnosed with cancer and at this point he's not making a enough dough to leave behind for his family right so he uses yeah. his skills to like what's the quickest way he can make money and he makes meth right <laughs> but his whole motivation is really relatable it suspends my disbelief as things get crazier and zanier and zanier but what's cool too is because he has such a clear well, the motivation changes him by the time he gets to yeah. the bottom it isn't even about the money anymore like there's that's what i mean there's multiple instances where he has so much like I, I remember like there was parts where his like wife when she kind of got in on the business was telling him like you have too much money I can't even launder it through your illicit <laughs> I can't la- launder she your has like a storage unit full of it yeah I yeah. remember that and that was the more moment where like okay then why are you continuing to do it and yeah. I think he comes to like realize like I'm shit a, I'm a fucking narcissist like yeah that's really what it that was his problem all along because he he was going to be a successful chemist with that other guy yeah uh, they had a company they started yeah, and they never really, or whatever. yeah, they never really like clearly say why he left. I don't know if he was banging that chick. I don't, I don't remember, but like, I don't, I don't see, I don't feel like they ever gave you a reason other than he just didn't want to be doing it or something. Yeah. Like, tried something and didn't work out and he ended up being, I don't know. I'm not whatever, but yeah, it really wasn't about the money. Yeah. It was just him being a narcissist. That but was, like, but, yeah, but that but was important, point, right? It, he had a relatable reason why he got into it. Yeah. Whether, whether that was authentic or not, that doesn't matter. That it was, doesn't matter. It was, it's like a, the, the, the practical concern of having cancer, there's going to be expensive treatment. My family's going to be left with burdensome medical bills when I die. How do I resolve that situation? Yeah. Like, that's relatable. And then it initiated this journey. And then the way things unravel makes sense because you've seen how much effort went into it. You saw how it progressed. And kind of my point is, it lasted eight seasons that it enthralled you the whole way through because of what that did to the character. Walt at the end of the series versus Walt at the beginning of the series are two different people. Yeah. And that's crazy. That's an awesome journey to be on. But if I were to talk about Jace, I know recently he's had more character development, but for the most part, yeah, he had a revisioning. He he hit his head at the bottom of a waterfall on Ixalan. That's what happened. Yeah, that's what, (laughs) yeah, you know. But, But for the most part, Jace and Vryn and Zendikar is the Jace we have now. And I think that's what's frustrating is that we see the same iteration of him time and time again. And the whole thing as well is that when I think about the mending, right, part of it was to kind of nerf the planeswalkers because they're basically gods. Well, they can't be cards. Like pre-mending yeah, they planeswalkers can't be cards. would be so powerful that if you were able to resolve it, like... Yeah. For it's it like to fit, you win the motherfucking yeah, like game. For it to fit the lore, like it just wouldn't make sense. They have to be just unreal power. Yeah. You know? you know, that was a huge thing, and I get that, but what's weird from a lore perspective is that I ended up relating to Urza, this all-powerful being by the end of it, more than, than Jace, who isn't by any means as powerful as, say, Urza. Yeah, like his and life that's because experience of his is similar to yours, where Urza's yeah. wasn't at all. Like, think about... But Urza gets 
he does some fucking he does shitty. some fucked up shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. He does some fucked and up. So and, do I. But what's cool about Urza is with all the power, you still feel the stakes, right? That's what's difficult about a lot of superhero tropes, like Superman. It's hard to feel the stakes because you know he can take on the bad guy, right? If you look at the Gatewatch and how they took on yeah, three never, Eldrazi, you, you never feel like they're being threatened. Yeah. What happened yeah. after taking on three Eldrazi? Nessa left the Gatewatch. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what went. was at stake? If you look at Urza, the the brothers war. For him to beat this rivalry he had with his brother took, for one, a long ass time, <laughs> a ton of time. Um, and by the end of it, he, I mean, he lost a, his neck down. He lost the bottom half of his body. He lost his academy. He lost, he lost yeah. everything over this fight. You felt the stakes. Yeah. That's they open up these time, they, they fuck with the space time continuum <laughs> by the end of it after like all of these ramifications of his actions. Even though he's all powerful, you felt you felt him because of his flaws, and that's kind of my point: is that things could backfire for him pretty big. Yeah, things can backfire, and we saw that. Yeah, you know? and then we saw Karn kind of basically his offspring, you know. And Karn was also pretty much all powerful because he was a pre-mending planeswalker, but he's emotionally stunted. You know, he's an emotionally stunted. He's he's new. He doesn't. He's experimenting with all the all these emotions, he's and he's like going a god through. toddler. But then the ramifications of that are insane. He literally sends a drone to Dominaria just so he can kind of see what's up. And it's the Mirari. We for two sets see what that does to the plane. Because all it is is a probe. And all of it is is a probe. Karn just wants to know what's going on. And then the Chainer's Torment happens from it. And all, the Odyssey block, like all of these blocks, all of these ways it affects characters from Karn just checking up on home. You know? <laughs> That's crazy to that's me. Funny. You know? <laughs> that's crazy. And that's because it stems from a flawed what character. What did you put in that probe, powerful. dude? <laughs> yeah, what did you do? All this malware that like, you know? And then it becomes sentient. And <laughs> it's, it's this it whole thing. Sentient. It's this whole <laughs> thing. And Karn himself is just hilarious. You know, I was reading, I was telling Annie, I guess he goes to bed at night and he just had this picture of Jorah and he's like, Jorah is my friend. <laughs> Jorah is my best friend. You know, and he actually causes a time rift just to save Jorah. He blows would, up the Tolarian Academy to save Jorah. I would you know? say you can't make that shit up, but somebody made that shit up. Oh my god, dude! He no really way. says that before I he goes hundred, to bed. dude. He says that, dude. Oh my god, you're not just saying that. You know, it's it's written somewhere that before Karn goes to bed, why does he? What is Karn doing going to bed? Oh, why does he need point, to go to bed? He's gotta gotta like down. That he just got. He's but then he looks at the picture dude. of this like redhead chick. Joyra is my friend. Yeah, yeah, man, you're in the friend zone, and that's yeah, they're, they're flawed. <laughs> you're you know? never gonna get out of it. And and I I, I think oh another thing. I think another huge thing with this whole arc too is that there's a very clear good guy, bad guy, right? Very classical. Yeah, you know, moral yeah, black and white. You can't get away from that. You can't though. get away from that. But we kind of did pre mending, right? Urza was not by any means the good guy. He did a lot of messed up stuff. I think one of the things he did as he was an aspiring artificer is in town, there was some ruler of a town and his whole thing was like, if anyone can move this Jade statue across the plaza, you can marry my daughter. Okay. And Urza, so Urza, had, like, hey, Urza did not give a shit about the daughter or the marriage, but she had a tome. She had a Thran tome he wanted to study to learn more about artificing. He's like, so yeah, he does it. Sure. Yeah. He builds a steel golem. So he can marry the chick. The fucking st- dude on their wedding night, he leaves bed and he fucking studies the tome, dude. It's all he gives a shit about, you know. There's that's there's the, moral ambiguity with that's those an characters. That's asexual, if ever I've heard of one. Oh yeah, dude. He did not. Give so a wait, shit. he built a golem to move the jade statue. The jade statue to marry this chick, just to get this tome that he just she was wanted in her library. He wanted her library. Did dude. he take her for a spin before he went for the tome at all? Or yeah, it doesn't say. I bet he didn't. Dude. He, he probably say. built a golem to do that for him. Dude, you know? <laughs> it? Yeah, here's my fuck. Hey, I gotta go. I gotta go. I, I gotta go. Where's I that you tone, a fuck by the bot, way? So. Yeah, I got. Get out of my hair. That's right. like some Doctor Manhattan level shit right there. That's what I. Where mean. he's like, I'm in the other room working. Here, fuck he's my just avatar. Like working it like. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I mean. That's what. I wonder if Jace would ever do that. <laughs> She's I, like, when are we going to get to it? And he's like, we already did. And he like implants and they, a memory they of make them a, doing they it. They make a spell of that and it's called Mindfuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's an unglued card. <laughs> it's a Mindfuck. <laughs> unglued card. You know. You can tab that one for free, Wizards. <laughs> You're welcome. We're, we're designing all, That's your, our spoiler all card. your rated MA cards for yeah. you. Yeah. 
Maybe like, like MA, like just asking, like, do you think that they as a company have, cause you've, you've talked about this, Kyle, that you're, you've got this suspicion and it's, it's pretty intuitive that they've kind of, as a company have reached the audience they're going to reach. Yeah. So all the people that were in the card shop 10 years ago or whatever, all of the D and D guys, like everybody who they are going to reach, they've captured them. Yeah. And at some point they need to change their brand or change their business methodology to start getting the net into everybody yeah, they, else. They want right? to capture, like, they want to capture greater market share, right? Yeah. Like, like the non people like us, you know? Yeah. Do you think that's what the story's doing? Well, like, I, I, I was actually just thinking, I was like, I think that's part of it because it's going to create some familiarity for other people. Uh, you know, like you say, mm-hmm. like the war of the spark is it's, you know, fucking Avengers, yeah, right? Guess, like, you know, that's, tropes that's are a good way to do that. There's moments where I'm like, is it because they're trying to capture a younger audience? But then, weirdly, like, I don't if, think I don't think age is what they're the, looking. The objective, for. I think, it's just mass appeal. A mass appeal. Because if you look at like the Theros stories, they're pretty violent. Like the mm-hmm. Minotaur are impaling people yeah. and like tearing heads off, and like they're like they're pretty descriptive of the violence no, that the, takes place. I think the crowd they want is primarily adult, like. Because I mean, we're the ones with the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I bet they want. It's, it's I bet the, they want whale sales, like guys like us that just pump a ton of coin into it over years. Yeah, I mean, it's eighteen to thirty-five year olds is really where it's at, and it's, and so, yeah, I think the familiarity of those stories, paired with something that's a little more adult, I think they, I think they, try to keep themselves in boxed in a little bit where they're not too mature about sex and language and things like that but sure i mean i don't know like i don't necessarily need that i don't need a mind fuck card as, as yeah i was as, just joking but. as much as i'd really would go out of my way to cast it every game but <laughs> you know like i it's it's not that it's i don't know you kind of have to in narratives you kind of have to prop things up a little bit on mm-hmm. on you know on violence or whatever like you got to kind of push it somewhere where it's like wow there's a lot going on like oh wow i could never experience stuff Mm. like this like hitting your head on a waterfall rock like that's so mundane you know to me like that's what happened Mm -hmm. yeah you know oh it wasn't that nikki b did something to him and totally wiped him out or whatever like you had all of these like windows of opportunity to have something well and i think that to these people and it was the rock under the waterfall that did it coming back to this war of the spark thing i think that's what's intriguing about the fact that the immortal sun's gonna be there right Mm -hmm. because what happened at the end of of hour of devastation like nikki b's mind fucking the whole gate watch (laughs) and Mm -hmm. they all they all leave they just leave like yeah they run he 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 convinces liliana like to join his side and so he's like leave i will i will send word she goes chandra she's using fire stuff and he's like are you fucking kidding me i'm a dragon i'm a dragon yeah Yeah. and she leaves uh nissa i forget what he was doing with her but nissa leaves and then he starts yeah he literally is like shredding jace's mind and he leaves and then Gideon's trying to fight him and he's like piercing through his like immor- immortality and he, he just leaves. So with the immortal sun, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see they can't because leave. they can't just those mundane things of like, there's not going to be a mundane ending here. Like yeah. you're stuck. I guess you it does help that things are at stake, you know, but at this point, even after seeing them again and again, like I'm not very emotionally invested into these characters. You know, yeah. like I find myself more invested in characters that just had the one offset. You know, like Chainer, I actually Elspeth's really story resonated. Was pretty metal. Elspeth fucking yeah. died, dude. Yeah, she had a metal story. There were stakes there. Yeah. Koth, dude. Yeah, there there were stakes in the magic universe. I'm talking about the Gatewatch specifically. Well, I know, yeah. and and and, ex- and that's what I'm saying. It's like it's not like they haven't done it before. Yeah, they've done it. You it's know? just yeah, this this Gatewatch thing is kind of yeah. Uh, Koth- this this is intriguing to me. Like the the like how you've kind of like painted the arc that they're doing with this, this longer arc, but the issue with having done that the way yeah. they have that it it's, I just don't like how they did it, you know? Cause you, cause the problem with these kind of, these kind of tropes, right? The defenders of the universe is that there's no resolution, you know? Yeah. And not to say that doesn't make an interesting character. Batman and Joker for me are a really cool dynamic. And they don't have a resolution. They eternally are in battle about one about disorder and one about order. Sure. They do it in a way that's interesting. But what I mean with the Gay Watch specifically is... But even that relationship evolved. 
Like, if you go back to some of the really, really old Batman material, it's pretty jokey. Yeah. It gets more serious. Like, other people have come in and, like, it's, it, it just escalates. It just keeps escalating this back and forth between those two characters where one is obstinate and not killing the other. So the other one does something even whatever more crazy, he can, like whatever, whatever he can, can to try to push the envelope. You yeah. know, it's that whole, the, it gets to that point, like in the movie, like the Dark Knight, where he's like, uh -huh. what is the immovable object, unstoppable force yeah. thing that he said? Like, well, that's really how they are, those two. Yeah. And it's just everybody else is caught in the crossfire. Yeah. But there's, you, know, you don't really have that kind of here. Like, yeah, you don't. You know, with them, you have a push pull, right? One pulls, one pushes. One pulls harder, one pushes harder. But with the Gatewatch, they serve more as a wedge. Like, Nicole Bolas is trying to go on a linear path. Maybe we don't know what the end of it looks like. Sure. Yeah. But the Gatewatch is a wedge. There's not this push-pull to where, you know, they're there's willing to do there. stuff equally, equally ridiculous yeah, to, they're put not. Him, to keep him out. It's, you know, Gideon's whole thing to get Jace to fight the Odrazi, he was literally like, hey, man, it's like this crazy-ass puzzle, dog. He really Come, said that. Yeah. It's this crazy-ass puzzle, dog. <laughs> Aren't you good at puzzles? Nah, you can't do it. Shut up. <laughs> and then he's like, well, I got to do it now, idiot. You know, then he goes to Zanikar and they fucking fight the Eldrazi. That's what I mean. Like, their motivations are so stupid. Shallow. Yeah, you it know, doesn't they need to be that. <laughs> that's what I mean, dude. So their stupid. motivations are shallow. And Nickel Ball is, I think it's been intriguing. I just don't, like, I just don't think I should want to see the Gatewatch die. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen <laughs> them for so long. And usually when I follow a character for this long, there's either three kind of things going. I see with a character if I see yeah. them this long. Is that, for one, they develop. The events that happen change them, right? The person I was giving in the beginning mm -hmm. is not the same by the, as the person I see at the end. Yeah. Or the unravel. So the person in the beginning has always been the person that we see at the end. The only difference is how I understand them and how much oh, of their past and character have been unraveled. Or the third, which is a prop, which they just exist to create atmosphere and show the world or bolster an end or like some kind of means. So and is that's that what, what they are? They, is they're just props? They're like props, dude. For me, they're props. You know? That's interesting. I don't yeah, have yeah, anything really else that can... Are. I don't have any way to convince myself otherwise. You know what I mean? Huh. Like some of them have interesting opportunities. Like Nissa as a flawed xenophobe was actually kind of interesting because she has the... She, she planes walks, dude. She sees more species than any other being would see because she sees infinite multiverses like she goes through all of them right and she has to deal with that flaw you know but she has a motivator of like but i do it for the good of the universe it's bigger than me maybe i have to work towards some kind of resolution yeah but then she's not anymore she's not a xenophobe anymore she's just about know? life she's just about life you know now she's a traveling sage it's the opposite i kind of like when, i kind of like when she's on zendikar and this like avatar manifest I think, I think there's actually the card for it the soul of zendikar right Mm. Where it's just like, it's just this like travel companion of hers that tele telepathically speaks with her. Okay. Because it's just the heart of Zendikar. It's just yeah. like, this is what I desire and this is my manifestation to you. It's but like if she was still a xenophobe, she'd be like, you're gross. She'd be like, oh, Avatar, <laughs> sick. <laughs> oh, sick. Where's your pointy ears? Where's your pointy ears, dog? <laughs> you know? And smooth, perfect skin. <laughs> God, I'm so turned on by myself. <laughs> you know? Like, I'd like to see that. And, you know, granted, Liliana is a little more interesting, you know, because she does represent black and it's a little more morally ambiguous. I, I follow her plot I a think little better. She, like, I think she was, to me, she was interesting earlier because now this is, the, maybe this is, I, I'm curious your thought on this because I think given time, their, uh, their pitfalls are predictable, right? Yeah. Like with her, she's being good to a point with the gate watch and she's in, invariably going to have selfish motives and betray them in some way. And it's just kind of like, I, I get it. You know, mm. we've been doing this for a while. It's the same old, I kind of help them, but kind of don't. Yeah. Well, I don't know with that. And I guess, I guess the gate watch doesn't have a lack of motivators. It's just the ones that they do are shallow. And for the most part, I see the greatest effect the Gatewatch has, like, th that can affect them is just the relationship with each other. Okay. Like, at one point, Jace leaves Ravnica because things get heated, right? Sure. He gets in some shit with the Mizzet, you know, everybody. <laughs> so he planes walks away and he contemplates. That's right, get the fuck out I of here. I wouldn't get into yeah. shit with Nif Mizzet either. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and he contemplates for a second. He's kind of like, should I go back? Like, can I deal with this? Isn't he like, and his whole thing to? is, his whole thing was like, I need to go see my friend though, dog, Amara. 
I need to go see her. Like, that's the whole thing that brought him back into that shit. Just this relationship he has with each other. And it, I remember reading at one point it's like, when he dude, sees Amara. She's, she's got a dog shit card, dude. Don't come back. <laughs> yeah. I just have this feeling they have their plans for their sets and they're like, we got to drag this planeswalker. You got to drag him in. You find a way to have us have this fit a card. We, yeah. we're, we're going to, we need a blue planeswalker. We only have one. Like, just make a fucking new yeah. one. Make 10. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. you know, I don't need the same one. I don't, I don't think there's a room enough for both. You know, just do I another think- one. You know, you've got uh, hundreds of talents of art, like artists at your disposal that could just crack you out anything. Yeah. Any fucking thing you ask for, you know, <laughs> so you, the way you find a way to get your blue planeswalker onto Ravnica the second time we go around is he wants to chill out with Mara. That's yeah. how we get it. Because the writer's like, OK, I don't really have anything like where we left him was over here. I don't really know how to move this chess piece back over that yeah. spot. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense to me for such a thoughtless, like, yeah, n- zero motivation reason to have him come back to this place. Yeah. And for me, like just to bring it full circle from there is I, I don't think there's enough room for all the narratives going on. You know, so think- so that was something I wanted to ask you because you were just talking about Liliana a second ago. Yeah. and. <clears throat> do you feel like trying to just like wedge in this whole gate watch thing dilutes stories like her thing of trying to deal with her her packs with all these demons mm-hmm. yeah a hundred percent i think that's happening in ravnica like they, they actually set up the last two sets in a really cool way right because lazav knows something's up with yeah nickel bolas Niv Mizzet knows something, something is up. You see the fireman's research and you're like, dude, is he cloning himself? <laughs> this is sick. What? You dude, know, but how another much? Another dragon how, wizard? That would be. Now there's Andy. five cards. Andy can go in the game, only get you know? so erect, dude. Yeah. But here we are, four sets later from this whole art. I mean, really longer. But we're coming to what I hope is the climax and maybe the finale of what this looks like. And there's no way this third set has enough room to do all of these narratives justice. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know how much room Lazav will have to do stuff. You know, I think it'd be cool to see him, you know, you like fucks Jace, but as Liliana shapeshifted and by the end of it, he's like, you're gay, dog. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like, we don't get to see stuff like that. There's not enough room. Like, (laughs) there's not enough room, you know. 36 so, and i said it earlier 36 well, he just make cards himself are forget longer. about that if that was a traumatic event yeah he's he like oh it. this really doesn't align with what i wanted at all you know let me just forget about it yeah because he wipes his own memory all the time right you were telling me that yeah he just why you know so it's it's if something lit- traumatic everything happens, that happens like, to jace it's a, it's is a, literally no consequence it's a forget me now pill pill yeah, he literally does that like it, <laughs> does it doesn't that. even happen to him <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. I didn't like that experience. Bonk. <laughs> yeah, like, like he, there's this whole thing, and it talks about he does like six months of this tireless research, looking into runes, and I think that's when he is solving like the maze in Ravnica. Um, and it comes to a head, things get heated, and he's kind of like, oh, that kind of sucked, and he wipes the last six months away. <laughs> you know, wrist starts. It's like you know, it's just hard to follow. Like you, there's <laughs> maybe it's why he doesn't develop because he can't. He just forgets all the stuff he doesn't like. You know. <laughs> You know, and that's that's what I mean. It's like either a character should change. Is that that is so irritating? That's what I mean. Either a character should change, or you're given a character that you kind of unravel for a while. Let's look. Let's think about the gravity of something like that. What would happen, Andy, if you wiped the last six months from your brain? Oh my god, the prospect freaks me the fuck out. So there's this movie. It's called The Never Ending Story Part Two, right? (laughs) So not not the first one. Okay, okay, I'm in the second one. I mean, you lost me. I'm back, dude. Get ready for this. So there's this there's like this Ouroboros like thing. This kid gets his his name's Sebastian, and it grants wishes. And it's like cursed, or it's set up in such a way that every time it grants you a wish, you lose a memory. So you you, you'll lose a memory, dude. You won't remember. And what memory? So there's like this big like fishbowl full of like all your fucking precious memories. And there's like this evil bitch that's and this weird bird man that's like watching your memories like roll down this thing, right? Dude, okay. So there's this part in this movie where he's having to scale the side of a castle and he uses wishes to create steps. So he's like, I need another step. And another step. And he you're just watching, doesn't wish for does one the, single <laughs> easy way up. Yeah, He's he like doesn't wish for a wishing ladder. for one step. He doesn't wish for 50 steps. He doesn't oh do that. My so God. you're seeing like him just shred his mind to get up this freaking side of the side of the building. And you're like, I can't, dude, it stressed me out as a kid, dude. Like it freaked me the fuck that's, out. That's like, can you imagine terrifying. like somebody co- like, like your girlfriend coming up to you and being like, 
we had a serious talk about this, Andy. You're like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh my God. I don't know. But here's the, something they could do. Let's say he overdoes it. Right, Jace has a kid. Jace has like all this stuff yeah, that's dude. like holy He's shit. He's just banging like, they chicks do have all a way over out. America. They have then a, he forgets all. They have a it. way out to make him like, oh wow, this is actually fucked up. Where like all of these memories that he's been wiping <laughs> are starting to catch up. Like if some bitch just came out of nowhere and said, "Hey, Andy, this is your kid," I'd be like, oh no, God, you know what I mean? <laughs> that dude, I'd like, read they, that. Though. I'd read that shit. That's what I mean, dude. <laughs> Jace, if if Jace was designed as a character, but, like I said, as someone that gets unraveled. You'd be interesting. He's the unraveler of secrets. Here's, here's, if he has to unravel his own past, yeah. that'd be crazy. You know? There we go, dude. Here's let's, the th- let's try to fix the rest of but these. Here's All right, the what can we do me, with the rest of the game? Here's gay-wise. the thing to me about that, right? Like, there's gravity to doing that. As exactly. a consequence. It's a big, there's a consequence. Fu- it's a big fucking deal, but the way they've written it, it's just, it's just a pill that he pops on Tuesday. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not a big deal to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how they could fix Liliana to make something. We're some negative chain, assholes. Liliana, chain, oh yeah, I mean, I this is you a, know, Liliana, someone had an interesting theory that I believe something she's chasing is immortality. I mean, that's pretty common. Well, yeah. Later, <laughs> you know, but someone talked about it'd be interesting if she turned into a lich herself. It would make sense. She turned her brother into one. She gets what she wants, immortality. But that was at what an cost? Accident, too. <laughs> well, at what cost? She loses her beauty, which she values a ton. You know, oh, stuff like that makes sense because now you're fucking wench. ugly. Okay, you'll live forever, but you're ugly now, dog. Like, <laughs> you know, people aren't swooning over you. You know, <laughs> so kind of like a Melisandre type situation yeah, where dude. it's like her her she, beauty yeah, is just Melis- a, gl- yep. a glamour. She's actually like an ancient old ma- like old hag. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Would, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think can, those three things you could do for the characters: give them flaws in a way like that. Like Jason now has this flaw that. Oh my god, he has he you know, shredded his he's, own memory. Yeah. He's his got own like memory 45 much. kids on 13 different planes. Like, <laughs> yeah. We just turn him into like some... He's like, what? Just deadbeat. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, some deadbeat. Right. That would be... Dude, he's, you know, he's like Hancock of, you know... Now he's Hancock, <laughs> all right? That'd be crazy. He's this deadbeat. He's like homeless hero sleeping on yeah. park benches. Liliana's a lich. Okay, now, you know, there, there's, there's some flaws. That's that. interesting. Dude, yeah. the most boring one to me, though, is Gideon. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, because his power. Both in terms of you can't even like who he is in the story and his car. You can't even like relate him to like the Hulk. Like the Hulk is like this ever present entity that takes over Bruce Banner's life and people die. Right? It's not even like that. Like Gideon yeah. has zero zero reason not to just stay in invulnerable mode or whatever yeah. the hell. Well, I think he's other than it makes he's him probably sleepy. more like Achilles than anything. Right? Like, yeah. Like there's what's his heel then? Like we don't even. But know what yeah, that there's is. no heel. But there's no heel. Yeah, if they made I, him just akin to Achilles, I'd be okay with that because they've already built that up with Theros anyway. Yeah. Like if he's just a Greek myth and we just watch his story pan out just like a Greek myth, it's probably gonna end in tragedy anyway. And then we just get some other mono white doe head. Anyway. Like big deal. You yeah, know? I think the f- only way to make him interesting is to yeah raise the stakes, like put some strain on him. Yeah. You know, because he's all about being a martyr and defending the people or whatever but what happens if you know the people he defends he finds out or you know are corrupt or whatever like the cause he's subscribed to his whole life ends up finding out that they're kind of doing the opposite and they don't align with his morals or something like that just challenge him in some kind of way but so far yeah threaten him with something threaten him something so far you know it's not happened and chandra just needs to chill out she needs to chill out dog that's it that's all i need yeah just to chill the fuck out dude like nobody gives a shit Shut the fuck up already. Yeah, she needs some kind of yelling at everybody, you know. I don't know. I don't really know what to do with a character. So, you know what she needs? She needs some debt, dude. That'll fucking chill you out. (laughs) (laughs) That'll chill you out. Some student loans. She's like, like, I need need to chill out. I need to inherit some fucking white in here, dude. I need to figure shit out. She's like, I've been been getting phone calls from Kaladesh like five times a day. Yeah, Yeah, dude. Looking to collect. That'll chill you out. Hi to Orzhov Bink. How are you doing today? <laughs> you know, just a shit, cold that would call. be terrible. Just a just cold you know, call from Orzhov Deck to ensure quality of service. <laughs> so I'm calling about, hello? hello? Can you imagine like hello? Chandra having debts with the Orzhov? <laughs> the ghosts keep coming at hey, her. Man, like, that's dude, a relatable she thing. Needs, their she heads. needs some kind of consequence, Chandra. dude, from being so it's impulsive. A, she a, needs some kind of consequence. It's the 21st century, dude. That's a relatable trope, man. You know, they're not going to make a neck beard planeswalker any day soon like, that's not <laughs> yeah. gonna happen but a tri- planeswalker that's set out well wait isn't Dak Faden in debt or something gonna... isn't he just like Han Solo with red hand or something? oh yeah I actually I, don't know I don't know yeah, I don't really know about, about a lot much. about him 
So, I want, like, what have been the different ways that <clears throat> Wizards of the Coast have approached storylines in history, AP? Like, because you right now they're on this like big, large, arcing thing. Yeah. Uh, in the past they've done like plain stories. Well, they had big arcing stories with Urza, right? Yeah, they had the yeah. I was gonna light. say like I don't know so some I of guess... the stuff predating like Innistrad. Like I'm not real familiar with that lore. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, to kind of put it in a nutshell, is that it started out like that, you know, kind of these just really awesome planes that you visit. But the Urza saga was all on Dominaria creature. for forever. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then we have a hub. We have Dominaria. It's the nexus of the multiverse. It's but for the most part, we're planes walking through Ravnica. these different planes. Yeah. You know? And what's cool is that because they R&D puts so much time solely into that plane and its concept, is that there's a lot of space to be creative and follow the narratives in those planes. Yeah. Right? Theros is awesome, right? The way that they found out how to represent mana in there and that the gods are basically ley lines of mana, just just these wells of mana, right? Erebos yeah. is the black well of mana and he's literally just is that what the point are? all that comes from. Yeah, they're ley lines. They're basically hmm. wells for mana, you know? And the way that they represented that it was cool in a couple ways is for one, they get a, you know, uh, kind of show magic's interpretation of what a, like a Greek pantheon would look like in the magic it was, multiverse. It was sick. And then the way that translated to cards is really cool because they had the devotion mechanic. Yeah. The more worshippers you have, like you can actually manifest yourself physically. Right. So I think those that's kind of like a case where you see that successful, where you get to just experience one plane in its entirety. Yeah. For a block or whatever. And then yeah, you see stuff like the Weatherlight saga or, you know, the Brothers War or or things like that. They do expand multiple blocks. We've seen longer narratives. Mm-hmm. That's happened. And I think they were done the right way. And then we have what we have now, and I think it's been a really, really kind of drawn out arc that we followed, and it's coming to a peak, and I don't know, maybe it's worth it all in the end, but so far I'm not, I'm not engaged, and I'm, I'm upset that it's happening in a plane so full of potential for lore, for story, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I, the War of the Sparks a cool idea. I actually really like this idea of everybody coming together and duking it out, but do it in a core set, you know? Don't, don't do it in Ravnica, one of the coolest planes, I think. You know, in the magic yeah, that's an interesting, interesting point. You know, and and I it's think not about the plane anymore. It's not about. It was the nice plane. to get the two blocks before it, but this next one's not going. It's not about the plane. You know, not there's anymore. not room for both. And what I hope to see in the future as they explore narratives is they don't just even be need to stay on the same plane for a block. They really could have this war on the spark be on any other I mean, plane then. at this. It point. didn't have to be anywhere else. It, it, it didn't have to be there. It could be anywhere. That's else. A good point. Well, what I'd like to see is I'd like to have a clear, have them clearly identify this is what this block is for. Like, if you want to do something like a huge kind of fan service, do it. And like, just go all in on the Power Ranger thing. You, you have a block where you get all the legendaries in red and they're, they're duking it out, you know? And Chandra's like, God, you guys are savages. What is this? <laughs> you know, or all the goblins see all the other goblins from other planes and, and that dynamic, you know? Like, if, if you want to do that, do that. Explore it. A goblin That's why I like shorter set. form narratives because they can do that. Or if you're going to do a longer form narrative, have things designed around that. Yeah. Like if you're trying to have some kind of subtext to it, like you want to elicit some kind of dialogue in the magic community, this is actually a great place to do it in your lore. You can do that. You know, magic brings a lot of people together. I think lore is this thing that can engage your game and kind of bring it to this other level. If you're looking at it, not just for the cardboard, but kind of this story that's kind of panning out with this thing that you designed. Yeah. Right. And those are cool ways to do that. If it's represented in the cards, well, you know, but I don't want to play my deck that's Jace Tribal and have eight versions of Jace, the Planeswalker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I, I don't know. That's... Dude, I, I better cancel my order. I just ordered a <laughs> Jace Tribal deck. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's how I'd like to see, you know, just a very clear identity for what this set is trying to do. Instead yeah. of right now, it feels like we're half in Ravnica and half in Nicol Bolas and the Gatewatch. That's, yeah, that's true. You know, pick one. Like, Explore plane or explore a longer form narrative, you know, and you can revisit planes. But then I guess in this case, yeah, they kind of had to build up all these Rav- Ravnica narratives. But I don't think the setup they put into it, we're going to see a huge payoff in the way that we would want to see. You don't think it's going to be Infinity War level, like half of them are dead. I think, I think, and not I, the ones you think. It's I think they're the going to kill a ton of characters off for sure. But at this point, I, you know. I want them dead. That's when you know, like, you think you're not. It's a damn good thing Niv Mizzet made a copy of himself, dude. Yeah. Sure. Oh, they better not kill my dragon. He's not a planeswalker, though. I hope though. they don't kill him. 
He's not a planeswalker, though. Do you think any of the Gatewatch people are going to get wiped out? Like, do you think they're going to die? I mean, the five of them. Well, spoiler alert. Or whatever. We, we know at least two are alive. We know Chandra and Johnny, I guess they have a novel, and the timeline is after this. Oh, interesting. So we know at least a couple survive. Does that mean they still that? have... Why would they do so, something I don't like know. That? Does so that mean here, they still have the spark? I don't know. <clears throat> so here's the thing that I, I would expect from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, that they're going to do what sells merch best. God, they are a business. They are a business, and there's a lot of R and D and like production that come into these. Like, like, if, like yeah. if, if one doesn't land well, you know what I mean. That's, that's why. That's why Nissa's not in the story because she doesn't land. well. Nissa didn't land well. That's why we have Vivian Reed. How do they know that? How do they know what characters land well? Is it just like they have a pulse on like the social media or they something? They probably have to be reading. I'm up. sure there's a, a multiplicity of things, but I'm there's get- people out there that are fans I'm, of Jace. There's people that actually like that character. I'm guess Ooh. I'm guessing they're doing user research as well. Like they're doing, like they're bringing in people for for subjective God, interviews. Do they have like that focus, to see like do you what people's perceptions focus are? Groups? Do you have, they have a Jace focus? Group? I think they, I think do. they have a focus I'd, group, but people I would not be surprised if they to. don't do focus groups. Hmm. I'd be very surprised if they don't. Huh. Yeah, and I, I can emp- you know empathize with that. Well, that okay, there's a from, lot of variables. That from that perspective, with, Kyle, where do you see this thing going? This whole like war. Of the I thing? I would anticipate that they won't kill any characters that focus group well. Fuck. Which which means which <laughs> probably hear that Kyle shut up. Which probably means that Jace and Liliana are, are, sure, are coming to, out are here to stay. And they get married and have a demir baby. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> That would that you're vet you have a vested interest in that happening. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I'd play, it. <laughs> I'd play it. As much as I think there's a lot of vocal group of people, crowd of people across the inter interwebulars that don't like them and would love to see them die, but they, they clearly focus well. That's why they keep them. That's an interesting yeah, perspective. That's probably gonna happen. But even if even if they're alive, I think they're gonna go in the back burner some way, somehow. I hope I think that gonna, that I'm going to have with. a break. But does that land well with the test audience? I mean, we had a focus group yesterday and Jace but is pretty th- hot. Think right about it. That's why we his sh- shirt. His shirt's off now. Shirts off. Cast it tested away. very well. Just that's, the, just the right nipple. Just that's the, just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no mosquito bite. We, nipples. we, we <laughs> focus. We focus group that two nipples made was it, too revealing. Right. So <laughs> we, we reviewed how Kyle's cousin's nipple looked. <laughs> And we found it just two, didn't land well with, with the male side of the audience. It kind of freaked them out. <laughs> we so we got Jace's the nipple size just right for Jace. <laughs> so when we exposed his chest and his nipple, this is this was the op. You know, we, just, so we looked yeah. at the data. We looked and, at the data, and this is what we landed on. We yeah, we'll just link the Excel sheet. Pretty much a quarter. Weirdly enough, it's about the size of a quarter. <laughs> That's the right size. That's nipple. the optimal nipple nipple size for arousal. Fun fact: they don't have quarters on on Exelon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's the real lore we went uh, into. Ten <laughs> things you don't know about Ixalan. No quarters. Their their uh, their denominations come in one, three, seven, and twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> twenty four. Yeah, I I I think that your guys' perspectives are different. Like you're looking at it from like this is a this is a business. Like this is the story's not for so I, I more sh- than that. I share his is I share AP sentiment engagement. I, th- I think in terms of uh an art form mm. I think it would be awesome if they took some risks like you've described. Mm. And I think that that would resonate really well and I think their stories would be more timeless. But I I I think yeah I think I think the story is probably like tertiary in their whole business of things here. You know, like it's, it's card, it's merch. And then the story kind of like pushes all that stuff. Yeah. I hate to use this as a comparison, but you and I started reading game of Thrones a long time ago, right? Like, yeah, not to sound like a hipster or anything, but I was reading game of Thrones before it was cool. Before, uh, before HBO announced they were making it. Yeah. We didn't know. We were just like, it was just a book. Right. And, uh, If you would have went back in in time, what, 2007 or whenever we were cracking at it, and told me that I'd be sitting in a staff meeting and my department manager would be talking about, yeah, I really can't wait for the next season of Game of Thrones to come out. I really want to know who it's going to happen with, you know, whoever, like whoever her favorite character is. 
I would have laughed in your face. Like, there's just no way. Dude, that, like, there's like five guys on this entire floor that even know that Game of Thrones right. exists. Like that. That was a story <laughs> that you know, like, yeah, like the book was very adult. The book was pretty, pretty big. I mean, these were big books. Like, they're thousand page things, and you know, most people don't want to commit to something like yeah. that. Like, there is a mass appeal in in that story, right? Yeah. That that none of what they've been doing with magic even overlaps this like there's none of that happening other than just like the the setting but like there is no an analog for a lot of these characters it's a good point you know because they're so every one of them is so deeply flawed and there's so much unlikable shit that happens throughout that is this entire story and his whole theory is that that's what people like they're gluttons for punishment that's mm. why he, they keep fucking doing it you can't look away because it's just you can't get tired of something like that, even though it is exhausting if you run through it the second time. But the first time, it's like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? I got to have emotional yeah, have resolution. Going. Like that is some, like a psychological perspective I think they could take is if we make our story fucked up enough, you know, I mean, they don't need to be like Game of Thrones level fucked up, but sure. like, if we make the hardship enough that whoever's paying attention to all the money and time that we're putting into this, they're not going to look away because they're going to want us to give them their their emotional resolution. Yeah. You know, where we're just not getting that. Like, sounds like AP half expects it just to kind of whiff, like this is going to be inconsequential. You're kind of saying the same thing. Like the marketing just doesn't line up to have this war of the spark, have something like the red fucking wedding. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not going to happen. And I'd say the same thing even about like affinity war, like this new movie, like they're just going to snap everybody. Dog. Like, oh, yeah, but you know, you kind of expect that from a <clears throat> Marvel story. I just think like, and this is just me, but, we're all in it for the long haul, right? Like the people they, they capture at 18, they're going to grow up into their thirties. Then they captured me at like early twenties and I'm still hanging out. Yeah. You know, like I'm in it for the long haul. Like I'm not going to get, I don't know. I need, if you're going to, I, I got to stay here for a while, you know, and I, your mechanics and your product keep pulling me back in and clearly you're putting the money in. So I don't know, just, I wish they'd have a little bit more courage to just be like, yeah, we're just going to do this. And, I do too. Yeah. I wish they would because the other angle on this is that it's it's been rumored for years <clears throat> that there's going to be some Magic the Gathering themed movie. Huh. It, it'd be it'd be terrible. And it'd be a terrible movie. Watch. There's nothing engaging if they do this kind of era. And, the, and that's the thing is it's like this kind of storytelling yeah. uh, isn't going to cut it. Doesn't yeah. help. Now if they did an anthology yeah, why, series that would be dope. But why is it not good enough for the card game? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. why is a story the caliber of all these other ones that we've been using is like as examples? A, a, examples like, why is that not good enough for the card game? Why I do think we? Because why do we get this? Yeah, it's I think it's because we've seen examples when it works just perfectly, where the art aligns, where the card functionality aligns, and the lore aligns. That's the planes, though. The planes do that. Like whoever's yeah. designing the environments and designing like the feel, like. They are nailing it. Like, Theros, they fucking nailed it. Yeah. Innistrad, they nailed it. For, even when they came back. Yeah. I yeah. was kind of irritated that they were even there. They were kind of in my way. Like, I don't need it to be about these people anymore. Like, I was like, oh, we're going back to this place again. You know? Like, I don't know, man. You're like, just, I just need me some Innistrad. Fuck these guys. Yeah. yeah. Even the, and even the Eldrazi <clears throat> part. Like, I was a little fatigued on the Eldrazi when we hit Eldritch Moon. I, I was. Sure. But really, like, if there's any place that has the Eldritch... Arkham horror feel it is in Istra. Yeah, like, it's a place you know it fit very well. Welcome yeah, that's to your how, home. Yeah, I liked that. They like, wanted to see cosmic horror. I get it. I love that cos. Yeah, cool. yeah. They are supposed to be cosmic horrors. I actually think that I like the Odrazi. I think they're cool. I just don't like how they died. I don't like yeah. the resolution to the Odrazi. I don't like their relation to these characters. Like, yeah, they were supposed to be these just unknowable. Doesn't it just feel too easy for them to solve their problems? That's too? what I mean, man. Yeah, hundred. Because like Liliana f slays Razaketh like that. Yeah. I was just like, wait, she's been trying to like fuck around and get him onto Amonkhet and like she's just being all cloak and dagger and then when Razaketh manifests Did himself, she even need her friends she to just, do it? She just fucking takes care of it. They were involved. Like it was battle time. Uh -huh. But it was just like it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah, it's just hard to resolve like, all like, of these arcs well. Like that could have been like the main battle but Razaketh had to be a, a junior to it to the thing because then they had to bring in the plague gods and Nicol Bolas. Like they had too many problems, so mm. it diminished the problem. What of, about Belzenlock? What happened with him on Dominaria? Like that was her last stop. Did she just like I, wipe him out at I that point? Didn't read through that part. Did you, AP? Uh, I think Gideon helped her because he's Gideon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. 
Why then, would he have anything? That's the other thing is like it, his alignment. Gideon's a sucker, dude. Doesn't work He's with her. Sucker, He'd be dude. like, no, I'm not helping you. Like he should just be like the true lawful good D and D character that is just unbending on like I am not breaking the rules here, guys. Like ever, Gideon, you know? Gideon's like he's like the epitome of a white knight in the like bad context. Like yeah, trying to be the good guy when when nobody fucking needs a good guy here, dude. Walk yeah. away. <laughs> hmm. He's the white knight, God. jeez. Because he because there's there's this point in the story where he's he's splitting time between Innistrad and Zendikar. Because he's trying to solve problems on Innistrad, uh-huh. and he keeps bouncing back to Zendikar because Zendikar is besieged by Eldrazi, and he's absolutely exhausted because he's splitting time between two planes. Just like, yeah, it, what was he doing on Innistrad at the time? You can't fucking help with all these problems. It's just he was like doing law enforcement type stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it'd Weird. be cool with the gate watches if we eventually introduce more colors to them as they develop. Yeah. Like I get their whole spiel is that they all are the certain color identities, but that's part of what's been so exhausting over so many sets is that they're just so predictable. Like they only have these finite amount of things they will ever do. Yeah. That's just, even that's on cardboard. Point. Maybe it's good for standard because you have a kind of a consistent strategy. I, I don't play enough to know, but wouldn't it be interesting if Gideon in that conflict is strain is like, I need to pick one over the other. And then he inherits, you know, a new mana philosophy he inherits green. You know, and that's that's something that's not unheard of because they've done that with a Johnny multiple yeah, times. Yeah. all over the place. I think Nissa becomes Simic. Like we see yeah, like people inherit colors. Yeah, Tamiel yeah. was inexplicably mono Simic. blue becomes banned. I think it's interesting for characters to do that. Yeah, because like there's a Johnny Vengeance. So you've got Boros, and I forget what the one is that he goes Celestia. Mentor of Heroes or Mentor something. Mentor of Heroes, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll see how it plays out. Um, how do you feel about talking more lore with us, AP, like later on? I mean, not such a, you know, let's tear the story apart, but yeah, yeah I, no, had, I had an idea that we just like kind of just talk about just legendary creatures. Like if you could give us like the, the four one one on some of the ones that we've already had, like out there that yeah. we have, there's because it, it happens up with the, the commander sets. Like it seems like yeah. they go back and like give us a card of a character that never had one before, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I love when they do that. Like we got like what you were saying, Felden is supposed to be pretty much nails it. Like yeah, really, like it. I like your idea of like trying to compare. Do their card? Does their card fit their story? If we already know what it is, yeah. So like Ludovic is a, is a, just a, doesn't fit that at all. But that would be a cool series to me. Yeah. Um. Actually, I I'm flirting with the idea, and actually I'm working on I'll hopefully have it soon of a series that's basically that. You know, kind of like a portrait of all of these commanders that we see in our meta. Yeah. Right. And kind of just make close that gap right the gap from the cardboard in front of you and the universe it's trying to represent you know and then we can talk about legendary creatures that are just that things that kind of are the perfect trifecta of how the arts represented how the card functionality is and the lore that they're trying to back up and i think felden's a good example of that um and i'd like to explore some of my own decks and maybe talk about that in a series and be sick dude yeah that'd be dope i'd like to i'd like that because i think we just kind of been like Let's let's talk about the overall status of how the story is going and functions in Magic the Gathering. But I'd like I'd like that speci- specificity yeah, to the legendary creatures that we as commander players are interested in. Yeah, I want to highlight that. You know, I, ideally, if I start this and it goes well, I just want some people to be able to play commander games and in their head think about really who's commanding my ninety nine and like what does that look like in the yeah. Magic multiverse. Yeah, I want to identify with that. I know Brad, like, he was really into Zergo. Like, as soon as Zergo got, like, the art even came out, he was just like, I'm fucking, That's my guy. I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then when the card came out, like, I remember the, the day that the card was released, he had the deck built. Mm. Oh, yeah, you're right. And we went, and we went and bought the... Speed versus Cunning, because it came out yeah, before Yeah, we went and bought Tarkir. the Speed versus Cunning, and he went and got that thing. And put him in the slot, and he's like, "All right, I'm ready to go." Like I remember, that. he had yeah. the deck ready so fast because he was so identified with an orc. His with whole an thing orc. was that he wanted an orc commander yeah. that wasn't Sequar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's and that's the facet of the game I love the most. You know, is, and and why I like EDH over other formats because it's an awesome way to kind of you know re- express yourself or represent yeah. your identity. It's yeah. why I like deck building so much. Yeah, I want to do that episode. That feels a little bit more productive than us just like. <laughs> 
shredding yeah. on. And I feel bad. Like, obviously, I love the game. That's and I'm very I've appreciative that Wizards but, of the know. Coast put so much into developing a story. Like, I think like we started up front. Yeah, it's a lot like, of time and effort. There's, They've there, got writers. It's and, unlike a lot of games where they have to fit it to mechanics too. Like that's, that's a unique I wouldn't experience. know where to start. It, with I've that. never it's played. A, like, I've I, never played a multiplayer game to where dialogues happen like they do in EDH, to where there's politics. And yeah, you like, follow a narrative like this person rises, this person falls, this person rises again. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. doesn't happen in any, any other game. There's not enough point. time to put into a lot of the popular games right now to have that kind of experience. Yeah. Like no one stops in Fortnite and is like, hey dog, this guy has more wood. <laughs> Let's team up on it. Look you how know? much wood he has. Look dude. how much wood he has. Hold on. Is that ninja? <laughs> Guys, shut up. Too many wood. Too many wood. Get him. <laughs> yeah. That never happens. It's reflexings. It's mindless. I can tell you what Fortnite's about. Lore wise, I played thousands of hours in the League of Legends. Don't know. No fuck idea all what about anything's it. about. You know? That's no funny. idea what anything's about. And and that's part of what drew me into magic as a format is that because they bother to do it, they bother they do and it. I, and I think, yeah, I think like I hope we don't come across as as shitting on the story. I think speaking for myself, I'm extremely appreciative that they provide a story, and I have hopes that, like us as content creators, that they continue to learn how to execute that better and better. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I don't think it's wrong for us to want more. Like, yeah, I want yeah. more of your story. I just I don't know, like maybe you need to sever ties with your marketing people. Like we're just not fucking doing that. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. usually, you you, know? usually yeah. letting your marketing people be involved with your product is what kills your product. So yeah, I don't, <laughs> it, yeah, that's really the true. Like product people, they make all the money. And then once the product is solved, like who is it that had that theory that like in a company, you have the people that they invent the product mm-hmm. and the company is built around that product. But yeah. once the product is invented and ready to go, you need people to go out and sell the product. Yeah. yeah. And there and but that era of that span of time, you know, let's say like the first four years was us developing the product, and then the second four years, like was us, was us selling, selling it. it. Well, by the time we're at the end of the eighth year, the people that have made the most money for the company were the marketing guys. They're the guys that like their ideas got to push this thing. Yeah. But then you started moving them over into development. Like you, you kind of missed that. Yeah, but oh, then this would be easier to sell. You guys figure yeah, this out. Figure this out know? so we can make it easier. And now to they sell. have priority. I can't sell yeah. this. Where it was like the product should have sold itself. Like all yeah. I needed you to do was penetrate markets and figure out who this product. Yeah, like for. we'll keep making the product. You stay in your corner and just sell it. Right, because there was an era there. You can tell, like just from the just the way the lore was, is that they didn't they didn't really give a shit about capturing anybody. Like. You know, they went from, yeah, we started off with just dragons and stuff, like, really easy stuff. Now, like, we have this story. Like, the stuff that you're talking about with Urza, like, yeah, he fucking just married a chick for a book. You yeah. know? That's yeah. fucking dope, yeah, dude. It's dope, it's, though. That's a crazy It's, it's, it's kind of shitty, and it's crazy, like, you know, but that really wasn't for anybody. That didn't, they, I don't, I yeah. have a, I'd be strained to think, like, that was run past somebody. Oh, Some, yeah. In the marketing department. It's like, wait, yeah. you want to do what for a what? Yeah, we want him to just, you know, fucking make a golem and move a statue to get this book. Out. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> what I love about, you know, there's this, I think there's this thing about it. Who is it? Yogmoth, to where he goes out, um, leaves and does a bunch of shitty things on the plane just to see if he can. And one of the things He's he a sociopath. does, he takes a high priestess, holds her for ransom, poisons her and a bunch of other elves, and he tells the tribe, like, I will return her for X and I'll give you the cure. So then, Shit. you know, so they get him and he gets paid out for whatever, gives him back, gives him the cure and it's sugar water, dude. What gives him sugar psycho. water just cause, you know, see, but that's, I, it's not that I like that. It's just that I'm, I have an, a reaction to it. Like yeah, I, have, I have a I'm, reaction. I'm disgusted by that. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a reaction for what's going on. I don't, there's nothing that like Kozilek and Ulamog did. That's like, oh my God, they have got to go. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're just shitty. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, they're just some beasts. There's nothing that there's actually nothing that Nikki B does that's like, yeah, I really want them to win. I think ninety yeah. percent of the, I think it's half and half. People are like, yeah, I really actually wouldn't care if he wins because he's just whatever. <laughs> he's not disgusting. Yeah. Like I just don't want him like to win because I want was. I want green in my decks, dude. I don't want I don't want to be all like Grixis, <laughs> you know, forever. <laughs> Grixis forever. In the end. In the end, Grixis only. Strawberry. Grixis now banned forever. all green and white cards, dude. That's yeah. the April Fool's show. <laughs> it's all Celeste. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for uh, cracking that out with us. That was a uh, pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, man. that was pretty cool. Yeah, anytime, anytime. War of the Spark. Well, regardless.
regardless of how you feel about the Planeswalkers or the Gatewatch or just the story so far. I don't know. I have a good feeling about this next set. I actually do. Hope you enjoyed our friend AP's visit to the podcast. I had to tear him away from that very alluring playmat of his. Uh, to get him to come share in this therapy session about the story. Well, let's get back to some deck techs, huh? I think we've had a long enough break and spent all this time bitching about stuff, huh? The music from this episode is from the incredible Dan Terminus. The opening song is Grimoire Blanc, and the song you're feeling right now is Friendship Through Clear Plastic Walls. Both are from his amazing Automated Refrains album. You really should seek out his music. It's all so, so good. All right, thanks again for taking the time to give us a listen. It really means the world to Kyle and I. Uh, Take care, and we'll see you again. Thank you.